You're watching Brockton Community Access's coverage of election 2017, the November 7th election here in the City of Champions. We're focusing tonight on the Ward 4 City Council race, and we have two candidates in studio for an open seat that's being vacated by uh, present City Council Paul Stadensky. We have Derek Barros, who's Hi. running uh, for first, first time for yes, office, sir. and Susan Nicastro, who has run before, yes. and she's going for the ward level. So That's welcome, right. Susan. Thank you. We have uh, Steve Foote, who is the former chair of the Brockton Democratic City Committee on the panel, and now an unenrolled voter, and Shana Barnes, mm -hmm. who is a member of the Democratic City Committee, uh, city councilor at large. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. We will start right up with closing statements. And, um, try opening statements. <laughs> yes. It's been a long day. I taught my two classes this morning. So we'll start with opening statements. And uh, we did a little scientific drawing out of a water jug. So there you go. Derek Barros is going to open first for a minute. Derek. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Foot. Thank you, Mr. Foot. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. Thank you, Jay. Can't forget about you. Um, thank you for having me here. It's been an awesome experience. Um, thank you to all my supporters. Thank you to my team. Um, and thank you for all the support I've had. This has been nothing but I mean, a great experience. Um, we've come, overcome a lot of doubt to get here. A lot of people doubt that we would make it to the primaries. Now we're here. Um, but we kept on fighting. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a 24-year-old college grad, lifelong Brockton resident. Um, and you know, I, after I graduated, I made it a prerogative to come back to my city and serve my city, not just at work, but also politically. Um, grew up from a single mom, you know, not in the most ideal you know, neighborhood, not in the ideal family. Um, but I overcame those things in the city while living here, and now I'm back. A um, little bit about my campaign. It's been centered around community, education, and entrepreneurship. Uh, community just wanted to be an embodiment and a representative of the community um, that is very diverse here. Um, I want to hold a an everyone type of anyone, everyone in the loop type of campaign. So having everyone know what's going on, you know, an open forum, you know, to let people speak their minds and not just let people talk when it's election season. So a year-round type of thing. Um, education, advocating for our students. Um, All right. Got to wrap it up. It's One minute, minute, minute it. 20, Susan. Go ahead. My name is Susan Nicastro. I'm honored to be here this evening and to be a candidate to represent Ward 4 on the Brockton City Council. And I'd like to open by thanking all the Ward 4 residents whose support resulted in my finishing first in the preliminary election. I believe experience, integrity, and character are what count in the Ward 4 race. I spent five years under Mayors Harrington and Balzotti on the Brockton Planning Board. And during that time, I spent two years in addition on the Brockton Zoning Board of Appeals. I've also been a practicing attorney for more than 30 years, <coughs> specializing in real estate and business. In the presidential primary last year, I was elected to the Brockton Democratic City Committee. I volunteer for a number of local Brockton charities, including my first love, the Charity Guild, which runs a food pantry and a thrift store in Brockton. More than 50% of our clients are Brockton children and seniors. Providing people with enough food is a passion of mine. Ward 4 and Brockton need experienced leadership on the City Council. I believe experience, character, and, te and integrity are key and what count most. Ward 4 residents, I'd be so honored by your votes on November 7th. Thank you both. And we'll get right to the questions at this point. Um, so we'll start with uh, Steve Foote. First question. Uh, glad both of you could be here. Uh, I'm going to ask you the question that uh, since the last round of debates, I get people that say to me constantly, I'm glad you asked that question. Would you make sure you ask all the candidates? So I'm going to ask you again. Uh, so now that we have uh, legalized uh, recreational use of marijuana, do you use marijuana or any other illegal drugs? And would you take a drug test if asked? Start with Susan. One minute. I don't use legalized marijuana. I didn't use it when it was illegal. I never have. Um, both my parents were heavy cigarette smokers, and I, I'm against putting anything in my lungs other than clean air. Um, as for whether I would take a drug test, I don't know. Would I be required to take a drug test, and for what reason? I don't know. I'm just asking, would you, would you if you were asked? By whom? By, by anyone, the public. Right now, it's, right now, the police contract has, a, has a, a, a part in it where they can 
ask for a drug testing. That could sp spill over into the elected officials too, eventually. So if that was to happen, would you be in favor? Would you, would you take one or no? I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I don't take any drugs at all other than um, fish oil. Okay. But I'd have to think about it. Fair enough. Okay. Derek, same question. Um, thank you, Steve. No, I don't smoke marijuana. Never have, never will. Um, in regards to taking a um, drug test, you can take one right now. doesn't matter for me. I feel that politicians need to be held to a high standard. I would say the highest standard in the same field as judges, lawyers, um, and things of like that nature. Uh, police officers get drug tested, so I would be all in favor of taking a drug test right now if we had to. Okay. Can I throw two cents in? Sure. Well, you didn't say it was as an elected official. But if I assume that you mean if I'm elected to the city council and I'm then asked to take a drug test, that might be something to consider. I, I, I would consider that. Okay. Okay. Um, next question, Shana. Okay, thank you. Uh, there are several schools in Ward 4, elementary, middle, um, all the range of uh, primary and secondary education in Ward 4. And we are in the middle of the uh, Brockton Kids Count campaign and on the precipice of the lawsuit that uh, could be coming very soon from the city to the state um, ensuring or requiring them to enact a lot of the, the provisions and recommendations that were put into the Education Reform Act several years ago that we're finding out now has led to millions of dollars of deficit, deficits in the school budget and um, with, with some other services to our children. So as Ward 4, City Councilor, what would you do specifically to encourage or to promote, uh, first of all, the campaign and to support uh, the district as they go forward in this lawsuit? Start with Derek. Thank you for the question. I'm um, being a ward for uh, Edgar Davis, Edgar B. Davis School alum, education is something that I hold highly with. That's something that I plan to work very closely with uh, Brett Gormley. Um, more on the funding side and let him do more of his uh, job. We need to hold people to a high standard. I do feel, I have been reading, actually when I was um, having dinner last week, I was, an article just so happened to be on the counter about the 1992 um, Act. Um, and I feel like we need to hold a lot of people accountable and there are a lot of things that I've firsthand seen working at Brockton High that some students, more so our minority students, are disadvantaged. You know, I've had students that have had four studies in a row out of six periods because they just don't have a teacher. So we have to hold, you know, people at Central accountable um, as a start, and then we need to go from there. Okay, Susan, same question. Brockton's education system is the jewel in Brockton's crown and has been for as long as I've lived here, 27 years, and it's just a crime that we're being crippled by having budget cuts, steep budget cuts in the, the money that we receive from the state to educate our children. I would do all I could as Ward 4 City Councilor to, um, to go to the State House and, and demand more money. Um, I don't like litigation, but litigation would have to be our last resort. I would negotiate. I would meet with anyone. I, I want to support the school committee and to attend more school committee members as a Ward 4 city councilor. Um, there's a lot to the job of school committee, and I admire the people who serve and would want to support them as I know they would support me. Um, I can't do enough to help the school system regain their funds. Would you oppose a lawsuit if it were to come forward in the next legislative cycle? I. As a last resort, I, I believe litigation might be necessary as a last resort. Okay. Derek, had a follow-up? Yes, with that, sorry, I, I forgot to mention that also on the state level, we need to go to the state. Uh, we know to go to Beacon Hill and demand that our students are being um, given the proper funds. We're due to that multiplier um, that's held a gap that had, I think, about a $4 million deficit, a tribute to that $4 million deficit from the state because 80% of our uh, of our population is low income. So that multiplier has had a little bit of a problem with that deficit and how they calculate the funds. So a piece of it is not just in the city of Brockton, but a lot of it comes from the state level as well. Susan, did you have any more follow-up that I gave? I do not. Okay. So we will go to Steve's next question. Uh, you're both running to replace uh, Councilor Paul Stadinsky, a white male. 
And in this race, we have a black male and a white female. Uh, do you think that race or gender is a factor in this election? Why or why not? Susan first. Well, I think these two candidates reflect the diversity of Ward 4 um, because that we, we look like a lot of the people who live in Ward 4. And I'm hoping for a world where how we look doesn't matter. I believe that in the city council, in all elected positions, what matters is qualifications and desire to serve. Um, so is race an issue? I've done a lot of door knocking and no one has made race an issue in my conversations with residents of Ward 4. I, I'm certain that race does play an issue for some voters. That's that, I think that's human nature. But do I want it to be? No, I want it to be the person who will best serve in the opinion of the people who take the time to look into backgrounds and, and, and uh, track records. Okay, Derek? Um, I would agree. I feel that in this day and age, race and gender does play a role. Um, but I'm only, I do my part by educating students every day that it's not about the race or color of a person's skin, but it's about merit. It's about um, integrity, their values. Um, and it, I've met a lot of people in my family that are like, oh, I support you, I support you, but I don't want you to support me just because we're family or just because we went to school together. I want you to know, you know what I stand for and what I, you know, why I'm doing this um, as well. So from my door knocking experience in Ward 4, I haven't. I haven't dealt with any race. You know, I've met, people have met me with open arms. Um, do I feel that there's some, some sort of systematic racism in Brockton? I've seen a piece of it. I've seen some of it, but you know, it, it's not something that I really focus on. Um, I try to address it when I can, but it's nothing that gets hostile. You know, you just try to educate the person. And if they don't accept the education, you just kind of got to move on. Next question is Sheena. Great, thank you. So now you both um, slightly touched on uh, and in your materials your commitment to social justice yeah. in all different kinds of facets, economic stability, economic uh, equality, um, just, just general uh, equality around the board. So sometimes uh, being in political office, those things aren't necessarily uh, germane in some of the decisions that you have to make. Sometimes you have to sacrifice uh, what's good in social justice for political efficiency. How would you both balance your commitments to social justice and equality with political efficiency, fiscal accountability, and responsibility? Derek first. That's a great question. I feel that social justice, you know, through the years has gotten us very far. And I believe that we, you know, political efficiency is big, but Social justice is also huge. If you don't, if you look past the social justice and go on the on the political efficiency side, you're doing the whole community an injustice. Um, so I, I, my campaign, you know, the way I carry myself is advocating for all people, not just people of Brockton. I've advocated for, you know, in other countries. I've advocated in Rome, you know, in made up scenarios, just to show that you know every person is equal. Every person matters. Every person, you know, deserves equal opportunity. Thank you. Uh, Susan? Please repeat the question, Shana. Okay, uh, a shorter version. Uh, how would you balance your commitment to social justice with political efficiencies, fiscal responsibility, and uh, accountability? Sometimes they don't, they don't necessarily line up or on, they're on different streams, but how would you, how would you balance that in order to um, make a, a decision in a vote or, or to, how would you behave balancing that? I want to ask you for an example, like what, perhaps well, from your own service. Well, I don't think it really has to do with what I've done. I'm asking you what you would do. So, well, yes, of course, but give, when were you hit with the? For instance, okay, let's talk about this. The Trust Act, big thing. Right. If it if it comes before the council again in the next legislative session and it passes, it will be huge for social justice may not so much be for political efficiency and fiscal responsibility, seeing as if we were to pass it and we become uh, a designated sanctuary city, which is still, you know, in quotes, uh, we might lose some federal funding that, and we, we can't afford to lose any funding. So how would you balance being socially responsible 
and, and, and you know, your, like I said, your commitment to social justice with political efficiencies. I am committed to, to social justice. That's, mm -hmm. that's a very important part of who I am. Um, as a city councilor, every question that comes in front of us, I guess you have to weigh all of the equities mm -hmm. and all of the sides of the question. Um, I believe in putting people first, but more than that, I believe in what's good for the city. There could be um, proposals that come in front of the city that the city council for consideration that um, are very good for people, but may not be in the best interest of a city that mm -hmm. is economically strapped. Mm -hmm. And we can't spend money that we don't have. And that would be a definite consideration for me in making a decision. We can't spend money that we don't have. Um, that's how I feel. Thank you. I think Derek wanted to follow up. Yeah, and just going off what we were talking about, um, I feel once you sacrifice your own s social injustice, social justice in your, you know, maybe your faith, your values, you know, and your integrity, I feel once you sacrifice that mm -hmm. for political efficiency, you're doing the whole community an injustice. Thank you. Did you want to follow up on that, Susan? Yes, I would just say um, I hear exactly what Derek is saying, but I feel it depends on the topic. It depends on the city's situation financially um, and in other respects. It depends, which I suppose is a lawyer's answer, but it's really, I do really believe that, you know, the balancing act is real. Great. Thank you. Okay, next question, Steve. Uh, as a city councilor, you'd have to work closely with the mayor. Uh, do you know the mayor? Do you know Mayor Carpenter? And how is your relationship with him, as well as his opponent, Jimmy Pereira? And who do you support in this upcoming race? Start with Susan. Um, I, I've met the mayor several times, especially since you asked me this question at my last debate. Mm -hmm. And I've met Jimmy Pereira um, several times since I pulled papers in July. And I like them both. I, I'm aware of strengths and weaknesses for both of them. I'm not supporting either one at this time. I think it's very important that city councilors, the legislative branch of the local government, if you will, work with the executive branch, which is the mayor's office. I think that's how the city moves forward. Um, and, and that would be what I would endeavor to do as the, as the word for city councilor. Tara? Thank you. Um, I as well basically on the same basis as Susan. Um, I'm, I've never met Jimmy until I, this year. We've met, we, we talk on a regular basis. I've met the mayor um, this year since I was uh, lived in New Hampshire um, at college. Um, we don't agree on everything. We don't disagree on everything. Um, I as well at the same time, there's been no debate, so I have nothing to, you know, to physically say, oh, you know, this is a strength, this is a weakness. We can only go based on what's happened before. Um, so at this point, I'm waiting for the mail debate. I'm actually going to make sure that I clear my schedule to physically attend this uh, debate so I can judge it on merits, you know, and not friendships and things that have gone on in the past, but what they're going to do from this point forward. Okay. Make sure you watch it on BCA. Oh, Absolutely. I, I'd just Susan, like to say, yep. I, I feel so strongly about people uh, attending or watching the debates. Um, in my travels in Ward 4, so many people have asked me for opinions. What do I know about the mayor and the mayoral challenger? And I've been urging people to go to the debates, to do the reading in the newspaper. Um, we're going to go to the next question, and that would be Shana. Uh, yes. So, um, Mr. Barrows, in your literature, you mentioned that you want to advocate for new creative initiatives to stimulate economic growth in the city. And uh, Ms. Nicastro, you mentioned, you know, your uh, your commitment to fiscal responsibility, and, and you know, particularly my last question. So, how would you all specifically, um, I, I guess? I don't want to say target new monies to come into the city, but how would you do that? How would you stimulate new growth? What would be one of the avenues that you would take? Um, I, I kind of want to give a couple of examples. I mean, would it be um, reaching out to a commercial tax base, more residential, um, just grant funding? What, what would you do specifically to get more, more monies into Brockton? Start with Derek. So from all that 
commercial funding we need, especially in War 4. You know, a lot of people have knocked on the door and say, you know, War 4 is a dying business um, sector of the city. So attracting new commercial businesses is key. Um, my, I go to college every Tuesday in, in Cambridge, and I just walk around and say, you know, I tell my friend Carlito, why can't this be Brockton? This can be Brockton. This is the same scenario that we could be in. Um, grant funding, we need to, grant writers in my college years, I've learned those are maybe the most important people around. Those, that's the best friend to have in your, in your back pocket. Um, for more of uh, my grassroots um, campaign for economics, um, I was actually in an organization in college called Enactus. I'm actually in the process of trying to bring that program to the high school level. And it's basically Entrepreneur Action Us. It's basically an organization that starts a business within a school that's targeted on social justice and economic growth. Um, while I was in college, we brought in, we created our own brand at Plymouth State University of ice cream that is sold around the state. Um, and we also took it a step further, and we actually, all of the pro, I think 70% of the proceeds go to homeless veterans. And I believe since I've graduated 2007, they have hired two homeless veterans. Um, and I was one of the people who started something like that. Um, to stimulate to economic growth on more of a grassroots level, uh, another part we, Emerson College is one of the biggest, uh, it's called an incubator, mm -hmm. where essentially it's somewhat like a dog, like a shark tank type of deal, but more on a grassroots level, um, where local businesses would create a network through this organization, and they would basically put forth funds to stimulate economic growth and commit the resources for this you know, new idea or you know, shark to get you know, their shot at, at business in Brockton. Right. Two Thank minutes, you. Susan. Thank you. Ward 4 needs sound economic development. It's an issue everyone brings up. We need a full-service supermarket. We need new retail stores instead of vacant buildings. We need new businesses to create jobs and employ our residents. Um, I drove South Main Street today, and it's just so sad. We, but it's also an opportunity, because we can do better. As a real estate attorney, I know the lingo. I know how to talk to. Um, real estate owners and managers and real estate brokers, um, leasing and sales brokers. And that's what I plan to do as Ward 4 City Councilor. I'll speak to every owner of empty buildings on South Main Street. Um, I'll speak to people owning businesses on Oak Hill Way. In fact, next week, one of those uh, big warehouse buildings on Oak Hill Way is scheduled to be foreclosed, and I'm planning to be there to find out what I can. Um, I, I've lately been participating in these visioning ses sessions for Campello that the Planning and Economic Development Office has been having. They've had three of them and there's another one coming up. It's very interesting to be sitting in the driver's seat to get to decide what's my wish list for this area. And so I've contributed a lot to this. Finally, I love the idea of an incubator. We have many young people and, and residents in Brockton who have great ideas for businesses. They just need a little bit of money and the know-how. And I would love to quarterback that. OK, just checking my time cue. I think <coughs> I'm six, something like that. OK, so I'm going to ask a very quick question. And uh, then we'll go to closing statements. Yes. Um, about the downtown. I know Ward 4 is not in the downtown. It touches the downtown. It touches Camp Pella, actually. And we talked about that. Um, any idea? It's one city. Every councilor, even though they're a ward councilor, has to deal with different parts of the city. What would you do specifically to jumpstart downtown different than what's already happened? I will start with Susan. Downtown needs a restaurant. We need a reason to come downtown other than um, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. We need a restaurant. We need a venue, a place to go where, where we can enjoy good food and hang out and get to know each other and all be together no matter who we are and where we live. Um, I think that's crucial. I really do. And I personally can't understand how we're not getting a restaurant in the downtown area. And I would love to partner up with the counselors who represent the downtown to work on that. Um, downtown also needs, it needs business people. It needs to get breaks on, on commercial space and to be able to start businesses. Okay. I'm going to give you 45. No worries. Um, I've actually met with Rob May about this. He's the city planner. Um, first and foremost, to bring business in, it needs to be clean, it needs to be safe, and it needs to be a place where people will bring their business and feel that it's going to thrive. 
Uh, I feel like we need to bring, like Susan said, we need to bring more restaurants. We need to bring more, you know, more of a multifaceted uh, business approach. You know, people, you don't want someone to just go spend, you know, I'm going to go in downtown and just spend, you know, some money on, on food or something like that. You want people to go and make this a whole day excursion. Um, we need to, and we need to not exploit but lighten up our T station. We need to get transit. We need people to say, wake up and say, I'm going to go to Brockton to spend money today. I'm not going to go to Boston. I'm not going to go to Providence. I want to spend money in Brockton. Okay, we're going to go right to closing statements, and I want to thank both candidates for participating thank and thank you. my panelists. So the order of the drawing was uh, Susan first. Thank you. I'm grateful to Brockton Community Access, to Mark Lindy and Jay Miller, to Shana Barnes and Steve Foote for the opportunity to speak to voters this evening. In closing, I'd like to emphasize my experience, my training, my passion for public service in the city of Brockton as a planning board member, as a zoning board of appeals member, as a volunteer and a member of the, the Democratic City Committee here in Brockton. I embrace diversity and I pledge to represent all of the people of Ward 4. As a woman at times, I've, I've had to fight hard to be heard, often against all odds. You know, for my efforts um, on behalf of the Charity Guild, I was named a Woman of the Year by the Brockton Commission on Women's Issues. Experience, character, and integrity are at the core of my campaign. I've lived in Ward 4 for 27 years with my husband, John Tuig. We're raising two young adult sons here. Um, I got to know so many terrific families in the years that my sons were playing sports here in Brockton. And I know how important it is to keep our children safe and busy. We have remarkable families in Ward 4. We have beautiful neighborhoods. Our diversity makes us strong. I know firsthand the issues that are affecting us in Ward 4. We need a full service supermarket and new businesses bringing jobs and employment for residents. We need to reduce crime, including domestic violence and abuse. We need clean, repaved streets. We have to restore the budget of our mighty school system. We need even-handed enforcement of all our city ordinances and continued vigilance of our Ward 4 problems, which include a proposed power plant project, a capped landfill, and a sewer treatment plant that burns solid sludge. Ward 4 has serious challenges. I see them as opportunities and I would love to be the Ward 4 City Councilor. Please, Ward 4 residents, cast your vote on November 7th for me, Susan Nicastro. Thank you. Derek. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Shana. Thank you, Mr. Foote. I'd like to just show how much of a great experience this has been. This has been too much fun. Um, I would like to show that um, you know I'm here because I'm here for the community. Um, a lot of people have asked me about the experience question. Um, how do you get experience? Someone giving you the chance. Um, I have a lot of experience. You know, people say I don't have political experience, but I have life experience. I, I was born here, I was raised here, um, and I struggled here. Me and my family have as well. Um, we're here together. I represent a lot of the people who are disenfranchised. Um, this is not a trip for, you know, funds or powers. This would be an unpaid position for me because I'm already dedicated to our school system. Um, uh, we, need more, we need more progressive ideas. We cannot deal with um, old establishment. We can't deal with people who want to drag their feet. We need people who are enthusiastic, people who are here to, here to work and here to put you know, them, their selves second you know, in Brockton first. And I'll be one of those people. Um, dedicated to my core values, entrepreneurship, education, and community. Um, I'm passionate, enthusiastic, um, bound by integrity. So on November 7th, please cast your vote. Uh, for the young life experience, Derek Barrels, um, on November 7th. Thank you. Thank you both. And we're going to do a quick wrap because uh, we don't have a lot of time. Biggest thing that's the most important, thank you to everybody first and foremost, but get out there and vote. Do not let the cynics out there uh, double the 9.5% to 20. We need a lot more than that. It's your civic duty, it's your responsibility, and it's your future. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>